Live. Senator, good to have you today. Thank you, Shannon. It's good to be on your show. All right. Have you made a decision about how you'll vote on this budget plan? I have. I have decided to not support this budget plan. This, is, this budget plan actually takes a step forward. I think there are some positives in it, but it also takes two steps back. And let me talk about why I think it takes a step forward. It gives us predictability and certainty in the marketplace. A two-year plan is a monumental achievement for a budget deal in Congress. Unfortunately, from my perspective, how we get there is as important as getting there. And how we get there is by we put some of the burden on the backs of current active duty military in their pensions. A 42-year-old who retires at, as an E-7 loses more than $70,000 because of this budget deal. If you're an officer, you lose, lose significantly more. So that's one of the big challenges for me. What I like about it is the pension reform is real. So there's some real pension reform. Unfortunately, what we're doing is we're going to pay for something over 10 years, but we're going to spend that money over the next two years, which means, once again, in Washington, we're having something that doesn't seem real to me, that the outlying years where we get the pay-fors, we never actually get to years 5 through 10 in the budget deals that I've seen in the past. We typically get the benefits now, and we pay for it later, and later never comes. Well, what do you make of the pushback against those who have questions about this budget and raise some of the same concerns that you do while there is increased spending for a couple of years? This doesn't level out, if it ever does, at least on paper, for at least 10 years, the benefits don't show up. Uh, there are those who say, um, you know, if you push back against this, uh, then you're not for cutting the deficit, that you're just a troublemaker and making things tougher on other members in Congress who are willing to move forward, even if it's just a baby step at this point. Well, well, yeah, we certainly should celebrate any movement in Congress. I get that point. But the fact of the matter is what we have to ask ourselves is can we continue to spend money today that we know we do not have, buying and paying for things we know we cannot afford, and putting that burden on the next generation? <laughs> I say we can't continue to do that. So from my perspective, the decision is difficult but easy at the same time. It's difficult because I know we need certainty in the marketplace. It's easy because I understand that if we cannot afford something, we ought not buy it. All right. In the House, uh, 332 members were convinced that this was at least worth voting yes for this step. 94 uh, voted no over there. In the Senate, uh, this morning, Senator Dick Durbin was talking about the fact that they think, by his count, they need about eight Republican votes. Also this morning on the Sunday show, Senator John McCain, of course a Republican, said he will vote yes. He'll be one of those yes votes. How close do you think this is? Do you think there are other GOP members who feel the same way that you do with enough conviction they would vote no? Well, it's hard to know what's in the mind of anyone, especially those of us in the Senate. I will say this, however, that it looks like to me that the majority of Republicans in the Senate are poised not to support it. Uh, I know that there are some that I've read in, in the paper that are looking to support it. Some names that we've seen surfacing are obvious. Other ones that are somewhat surprising that will be voting against it. So the list on the Republican side that will be voting against it is becoming a larger list. But it is clear that there will be a very, very tight vote in the Senate. There will probably be six or seven senators who are Republicans who will support it, and they're coming out today, and I think you'll hear more tomorrow. And that means they still need a couple more votes. So this is going to be a, a very heavy and, and an interesting week in, in the Senate. Okay, so if they don't get the votes they need to pass this, those who are supporting this budget plan, where does that leave us? Because we know after the first of the year, there is the potential for another government shutdown. We're going to be talking about the debt ceiling. Uh, and the budget process on the Hill, just about everybody would agree, is broken at this point. So if this doesn't pass, what next? Well, Shane, I'll tell you this. I think the one thing that we've done better this time around than we did in September 30th, being surprised that October 1st actually comes after September 30th. Remarkable experience on calendars. But what we saw this time is that we set a pre-date, December 13th, Friday, December 13th, to get something hammered out. And so what we see today is the making of progress. Both sides are talking, which is also a great fact as well. So what we have is enough time between now and January the 15th to bring something back to the table if this did not pass in order to avoid what could be another shutdown. I I've said for a long time that I think another shutdown is very doubtful. I do believe that trying to stay at the table and arguing and discussing other solutions and other opportunities to reduce our spending is incredibly important. If we can't find a way to cut 1 or 2% out of our spending today, how do we do it? Uh, when it gets even more difficult. I don't know that we get there unless we start now. All right, Senator Tim Scott, it will be an interesting week. We know you're a no vote. It we'll will. watch uh, the rest over there. Uh, thank you for your time today. Thank you, Shannon.